or kinetic theory of particles. This is a very simple but very powerful theory. It helps us explain why solids are the way they are and why gases are the way they are. Yeah, why does matter behave the way it does? So here's the idea. We say that all matter, that's the first idea. All matter is made of particles. These are tiny, small things and they are moving all the time. Okay. So particles that are moving or that are in random motion. So we are basically saying that everything has particles which are constantly moving. Constant means it doesn't stop. If it stops, then that is called zero Kelvin. So why can't temperature be below that? Why temperature? is related to how fast particles are going. And if they're not going, if they're not moving, then there is no temperature, it's zero. So absolute zero, the concept comes from the movement of particles. So why can't it be colder than that? Because that's when the particles stop. So the whole idea of temperature is, if they move, that's temperature. If they don't move, that's not temperature. That's constant, that's zero Kelvin, right? So this is the first idea that constant random motion. And this random motion, of course, comes from the kinetic energy. And we know that kinetic energy of particles affects their temperature. Okay. So if you have high temperature, that simply means you have high kinetic energy. So they move faster. Then, so particles are in constant random motion, which means that, you know, that temperature is calculated to their average kinetic energy. So if temperature is more than that, you will kinetic energy more than that. And kinetic energy is less than that, temperature will fall. Third idea here is that there are forces of attraction between them. So particles have forces of attraction that are affected by distance between them. And this is the fundamental difference in all the three states of matter we have between them. We say that one, particles are constantly moving. Two, the kinetic energy tells us how fast or slow they move, which means how high or low the temperature is. And three, they have constant attraction with each other, but this attraction changes based on how far or close they are. That's the idea. Now in solids, we know they make crystals, right? That's a word that we use, crystals, which means they come together and they make a certain shape. So void crystal, and X-ray crystallography is a technique that we use to figure out how the crystals are. It's kind of like X-ray of the solid that we have. And based on that, we know how they behave in particular. We know that solids usually have particles which are like this. So if I were to draw a solid or just to represent a solid, of course, we can't see these particles, but we can have X-ray crystallography to show us the structure. So the people have taken pictures of atoms through X-ray crystallography. So nobody has seen atoms. We have seen atoms now. Now in liquid, the same thing will not be like this. So it will be randomly arranged. So it will be, there won't be any order. So things will move randomly. So that is liquid. And the same thing will be like this in gas that half of them won't be even seen or close to each other. And the others will simply be moving randomly and they'll be very, very far away. So this is one way to depict or look at how particles are. Let's compare them. So again, this is solid liquid and gas. So solid, liquid, and gas. So let's look at their four main things. Number one, their kinetic energy. Solids have low kinetic energy. And because gases are exact opposites, they have high kinetic energy. So solid is low, gas is high, and liquid is in the middle. So it increases like this. Second, the force of attraction. So forces of attraction. In solid, they are high. 
in gas, obviously gas is opposite of solid, so it will be low. So this force of attraction increases as you go from gas to solid. And then the distance between them. So the distance, as you can see in solid, particles are very close to each other. The distance is low. In gases, particles are far from each other. So distance is low and the distance is high here. So you can clearly see it increases this way. And are there any words to describe their motion, their movement? Yes. In solid, we say they vibrate on their fixed position. Vibration means goes to the right, goes to the left, up, down, whatever, but comes back to its original position. In gases, they are completely free. So they move freely. And in liquid, they are free, but they usually collide a lot, which means they're not that free. So they, we say they slide over each other. These are terms that you should use. They will help you get marks and they will help you score better as well as explaining in as few words as possible. This is the picture that we have right now. And we can explain the behaviors of solids, liquid, and gases based on just these four ideas. Just these four ideas. Kinetic energy, force of attraction, distance, and motion. So let's think about it. Why is it that when I increase the pressure, gases compress? Let's think about it. Pressure is how much forces they apply on each other. That's the idea. So when I put them in small space, so they are closer to each other. And when they're close to each other, they hit each other more. And that means the pressure will increase. Because remember, pressure and volume are inversely related because now we can explain if they have low volume, that means they're close together, they will hit each other more, pressure will high, pressure will be high. And if they have high volume, more distance between them, obviously pressure will be less because they don't collide. They don't collide that often. Another question is that which of these is random? Tell me. Between solid, liquid, and gas, Vibration, sliding, and free motion. Which one is random? Slide yeah. back. All of them. All of them are random. Random kya hota hai? Random means that you cannot predict in which direction it will go. And that's exactly how it is. Solid will vibrate. Yes. But will it vibrate in this direction or here or here or here or here? It can go any direction. Doesn't matter. So, liquid slide. Yes. But wo bhi direction slide kar sakte. They don't have a fixed direction. And same for gases. They can move in any direction they want. Sure, gases flow more than solid and liquid. But that simply means that they're all three of them are random. So that's important. They are all random. Okay. okay. So when we say we are increasing the volume, which of these four things are we increasing? If we increase volume of something, the distance, exactly. That means the difference between solid and gas is simply that in solid particles are close together and gas particles are far away. That's it. And whenever we talk about volume, we say particles are further away. So if I have ice, particles are close together. I heat it, it becomes liquid. Will ice have more? Ice is a bad example, by the way because it doesn't behave exactly the way most liquids do. Let's say I have mercury, which is solid. And then I melt it, it becomes liquid. Will the solid mercury have high volume or will the liquid mercury have high volume? The liquid, okay. The liquid, absolutely. Because in liquid, it's not just the particles, but the spaces between them as well, which is why the liquid will have higher volume. And similarly, if I boil it, then the particles are going further and further away. So and the gas will have much higher volume, even though it's the same amount. 